Burada a Chroesa, in digwyddiad curriculum i Gymru. Digwyddiad ble byddwn yn edrych yn ôl gyda balchder ac ymlaen gyda optimistiaeth a diolch yn fawr iawn i James Kent o EAS am teitl ein digwyddiad ni heddiw. Fe enw i yw Tegwan Ellis um, a fi yw Prif Weithredwr yr Academy Genedlaethol ar gyfer arwenyddiaeth a ddysgol ac uh, gobeithio eich bod chi gyd yn iawn. Ni'n ddiolch gar iawn i chi, uh, i chi am Gymryd yr amser bod yma. Amser pan mae'n brysur iawn yn eich ysgolion a'ch sefydliadau chi. Ni'n sylweddoli mae cyflwyno rhywbeth fel hyn ar ddiwedd tam o'r ddim yn amserol iawn. Felly diolch i chi um, am, uh, am, am rhoi yr amser i ymuno gyda ni bod yma ar yr adeg pan mae cymaint yn digwydd diwedd tymor. Mae'r digwyddiad hwn wedi cael ei siapio mewn cydweithrediad gyda'r consortia, uh, gyda'r bwriad o roi gofod i chi ystyried eich anghenion ar gyfer darparu y cricwm i Gymru. Um, a sut y gallwn ni helpu uh, mewn cydweithrediad gyda uh, consortia rhanbarthol uh, pan ddwch chi'n ôl yn mis Medi. Mae'n cynnwys cyfleoedd i chi glywed gan y gwynid ag addysg ar Gymraeg, Jeremy Miles, i chi glywed am brofiadau dai gyda maith, uh, Sue Roberts a Joe Queto, uh, cymdeithion yr Academy, am i gwaith nhw o baratoi at y gryclwm i Gymru. Ac hefyd i orffen uh, y sesiwn dwy awr, um, bydd Alan Jones yn ymuno uh, gyda ni o Lywodraeth Cymru ac yn rhannu gyda ni y gwaith um, mae e wedi bod yng nghlwm a um, sef arwain y sesu a dilyniant. Felly fel rhan o'r digwyddiad heddiw, fe gewch chi gyfle i drafod mewn grwpiau gyda garweinwyr eraill o ledled Cymru ac yn y sesiwn trafod olaf, uh, cyfle i chi ddweud wrth ym ni pa fath o gymar, gymorth neu arweiniad yr er hoffech um, er mwyn cymryd y cam nesaf yn eich gwaith chi o ddarparu yr addysg o'r eposib i'n plant an pobl ifanc. Felly heb oed i pellach fyth eich reiwn i nawr gyda negys fideo gan y gweinidog addysg ar Gymraeg, Jeremy Miles. Diolch am y gwahoddiad i siarad gyda chi heddi, mewn digwyddiad a blygwyd mewn cydweithrediad rhwng yr Academy Genedlaethol ar gyfer arwynyddiaeth addysgol a'r consortio rhanbarthol. Mae hwn yn gyfnod cyffrois ar y daith o gyflwyno'r broses diwygio er mwyn codi safonau a dyhaiadau i bawb. Mae ein cyrcwlwm gwedd newidiol yn gwaith o ddiwygio'r maes anghenion dysgu echonegol a'r dull gweithredu newydd ar gyfer gwella ysgolion yn prysur ddwyn ffrwyth er mwyn i ni allu gosod sylfaenu ar gyfer systemaddysg sy'n addas ar gyfer y dyfodol. On the 27th of June, I published our new non-statutory school improvement guidance, which provides a clear framework for evaluation, improvement and accountability. As you'd hope and expect, we've placed the learner, their well-being and progression at the centre of this. And this is key to aligning our school improvement system with the ethos of our new curriculum. The guidance makes clear the difference between and the different roles played by assessment and accountability. And this is crucial to ensuring that you as leaders uh, are clear on what is required and how the different parts of the education system will support you to do this. As we all know, this kind of transformational change depends on our school leaders being empowered and supported to make this happen. And to support you, we've published the National Resource for Evaluation and Improvement, providing guidance for learners on self-evaluation, as well as new supporting materials providing practical support on evaluation and improvement, curriculum design, progression and assessment. We'll continue to support schools as we move into curriculum rollout in September and beyond, uh, as we continue on this journey towards an education system which offers high standards and aspirations for all. Felly, rwy'n gobeithio byddwch chi'n mwynhau'r gan hadledd heddi ac rwy'n edrych ymlaen at weld unrhyw gynigion o ddaw allan o'r digwyddiad hwn heddi yn cael ei datblygu i gefnogi ar wneudio yn y dyfodol. Diolch yn fawr iawn, gweinidog um, am y neges yna. Um, nawr i ni mynd i glywed gan dau arweinydd um, y fel wedys i cymdeithion i'r Academy, Sue Roberts a Joe Queto. Um, ac Mae rhaid i ni atgoffa'n hunan y mis Medi 2022 cychwyn y daith yw Cricliwm i Gymru ac mae hwn yn rhoi cyfle i ni glywed nawr gan Sue a Joe am sut maen nhw wedi bod yn paratoi ar gyfer cychwyn y daith yna. Felly, dyna ni am gychwyn gyda Joe Queto mynd i primary uh, yng nghas newydd. Diolch, Joe. 
Uh, morning everyone. So I'm Jo Quato. I'm the head teacher of Mainz Primary School in Newport. Um, I've been head teacher here for four years um, and I'm an associate in cohort four of the National Academy. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our curriculum for Wales journey, um, where we've been, where we're hoping to go and I guess things that we've learned along the way. Um, so hopefully this will give you a flavour of, of the school and then where we are on our curriculum journey. So our school is a large primary school and um, it's right in the middle of Newport city centre. We've got approximately 520 pupils on roll, but our mobility is really high. So that changes regularly. Actually the pupil mobility we've just calculated for the year and it's actually 29% now. Um, so lots of children coming in, lots of children leaving us. Um, free school meals is, is relatively low compared to the deprivation that we have across the school. Um, ALN around 25%, 92% of our children speak English and additional language. Um, so that brings a real richness to our curriculum and our sort of uh, school community. And we have around 42 languages at any one time at the school. Um, so the next slide just shows how our school has grown in the last 10 years. So it's gone from around 373 pupils um, and, and around 520, but that changes weekly. Um, and that's because we've had quite a large influx of Eastern European Roma children. Um, so if you look at the, the circle on the right, there's a small wedge that's coloured red. Um, that shows our pupils who identify as Roma, but actually the number of children who are Roma is much higher. So we've got around 20% of our school community are Roma, um, around 20% of Bengali, about 20% Punjabi, around 11% White British, around 19% Eastern European, and then sort of 10% um, of everybody and anybody else. So a real sort of diverse school. Um, and, you know, we, we have really sort of centred our curriculum journey around celebrating that diversity. So our school vision, um, learning and living in harmony, has been the school vision for a number of years. Um, and we review it annually and feel it really does reflect us as a school. We've also added a, um, a whole school value, um, the value of peace, and that's really driving our work at the moment. And then we've got three whole school aims, which are equity, excitement and excellence. So they really guide everything that we do. So thinking about equity and, you know, that's talked about a lot now, but really making sure that everybody has got what they need to thrive. And, you know, that's really important to our local context because actually, particularly during the pandemic, lots of our families needed really basic support with food, housing, um, to be able to just survive, but also then thinking about our pupils and what they need to thrive in school. Uh, making sure our curriculum is really exciting. Um, our contacts for learning are always based around sort of real life learning experiences. Um, we work through something called Peace Smiler, which I'll come on to in a minute, but there's lots of hands on learning, partly because of the children's language needs, but also because that keeps them really engaged and excited and wanting to learn. And then alongside all of that, making sure that we're always aiming for excellence, we've got really high expectations um, and lots of our children don't meet um, what would have been the expected standard, but actually the progress that they make in their time here um, is phenomenal. So I'll talk you through some of the curriculum bits and pieces. So family and community engagement is a large part of what we do, but I'm not going to talk about that today because I could keep you here all day talking about family and community engagement. Um, so Metacognition and growth mindset is a real strength of the school. So when I arrived in 2019, the school had spent a lot of time shaping the learning habits and really thinking about how to encourage the children to have a growth mindset. So that's really um, driven some of our work going forward. And we're actually working through a three year programme at the moment around metacognition and thinking. And um, we're one year into that programme. So we've got two years left to go to really sort of have that shape our curriculum. So back in 2019, it was really thinking about, right, where are we as a school? Um, why do we need to make any changes? Well, you know, the new curriculum's coming, but actually for us, that was a, a a, a really refreshing time to think about right the needs of our children and our community what do we need so why do we need to change what do we need to change and how we're going to get there and you can see some of the um 
things that we looked at. So thinking about reviewing our school aims, looking at our current practices and thinking really carefully about, you know, what do we want to stop? What do we want to start? What do we want to make better? So what do we want to strengthen and what do we want to sustain? So what's already really good, but you need to keep that on the boil and keep that going. Um, thinking about how we manage things like performance management um, processes. So we changed those over to professional development conversations and really started thinking about equity for staff rather than giving everybody the same professional development thinking about what people needed to be able to thrive in their own classrooms. You know, there are certain elements that, of course, everybody needs, but, you know, that sort of working in a more bespoke way has been really valuable for us. Um, oh, gosh, sorry, I didn't mean to click on that. Um, so there were a few other things. So we did a lot of work around the pedagogical principles, um, lots of work around authentic learning. We're really fortunate because we're right on the edge of the city centre, so we can walk um, for two minutes and... You know, there are lots of things on our doorstep. There's the local library that we use all the time, um, the, the, the shops, um, as well as other things, all within walking distance. Um, so looking at Peace Marla, Peace Marla was something that was introduced to us by our local community centre, who we now work very, very closely with. Um, community House Eaton Road are amazing. It's run pretty much by volunteers, but there are some paid staff. But they are a gold-accredited Peace Marla um, place so they got us involved in Peace Marla which is all about treat others how you wish to be treated and that's really helped us to shape our community working but also to shape our curriculum so Peace Marla is something that was set up by a lady called Pam Evans and um, you can find Pam on Twitter and sharing messages of peace um, but that's really helped us to think about our community and we sort of say it means that it takes a community to raise a child because there's lots of things that our children and families need that we can't provide on our own. So the Peace um, Marla work then evolved into the Peace Plan and the Peace Plan is very simple. It's just a simple word document split into months and it covers all of the events the celebrations and um, they may be cultural celebrations, religious celebrations, they may be days to raise awareness of particular um, additional needs or events that are happening in the world or events that have passed and looking at um, how that then shapes our learning because we were finding that we wanted to celebrate the cultures of the children in the school and the different things that were important to them but it was hard to do everything on top of the sort of day job. So that sort of celebration around the peace plan really is what drives our day-to-day -day work now. Um, so what we're doing, um, we spent some time now this term talking about class peace plans and really getting parents involved in inputting into the peace plan so that they're able to share what's important to them. Um, so that's some ongoing work because it's not as simple as just sending something home for parents to complete or, um, you know, asking them just, just to let us know because there are language barriers. So the plans are to hopefully get parents into school through a parent forum and to input further into that peace plan. It's also something that we ask the community to try and contribute to as well. So that's still evolving, but so far that's been really powerful. Um, we looked at all of our monitoring, evaluation and review processes in school and try to make things as simple as possible. Try to strip back sort of the really large documents that you know took a, a while to read through and even longer to write. And we came up with this just really simple model for self-evaluation based on the start, strength and sustain and stop um, that I talked about earlier. And staff and leaders are able to then input into that. Um, you know, the hope is, as that evolves, that we can get more of a parent voice coming in through some of those areas. And obviously, we're always asking the children um, how we can improve. So that, um, that self-evaluation review is just over two pages. And then those actions then go uh, drop straight into our school development planning. So... Um, Curriculum vision, uh, this looks very busy and our curriculum vision um, will look something similar to this um, when it's published in readiness for September. What we've done over the last four years is we've just added to a Google slide um, the things that are important on our curriculum journey. So when we've got students into school, when we've got new staff members or even when we're just taking stock of where we are. We're going back to that curriculum vision and everything that's important there. So that um, needs to be tidied up a little bit because it is very busy and very bright and colourful but to go alongside that then 
we've also got another document which explains in a little bit, bit more detail how we're linking together all of the areas for our school. So um, on to the Mainzy Must Have. So the Mainzy Must Have was something that were in place before I got to Mainzy, but it's something that evolves all the time. So every year we review the 10 Mainzy Must Haves and we've sort of matched them over to the pedagogical principles and thought about the four core purposes. And we talk about, is this still what we want for our children? Is that what, how we want our teaching to look? And then when we do any monitoring, evaluation and review, everybody knows that we're going to be keeping an eye out for the main must haves. And that's what we talk about then when we talk about where are we with, with teaching and learning. Um, the pupils have had an input into that. Again, we, the learning squad that we had in place pre-COVID hasn't been at back up and running, but the plan is to get them back involved now in the autumn term. Um, we do a huge amount on community and family engagement. And I think sometimes we, we forget to talk about the teaching and learning. You know, the teaching and learning is really high quality at Mainzy. We've got um, very, very experienced teachers. And we also then put a really um, robust professional learning programme in place for anybody new starting to the school because it's quite a different place to work. When you're sometimes faced with, you know, majority of your children who've got English as an additional language that requires you to teach in, in a bit of a different way. Um, so I'm just keeping an eye on time. So I'll, I'll skip through some of the things. So in 2020, um, we had a small thing um, that was the global pandemic. So we really had to shift our focus. We had to come away from our focus on curriculum and we really had to think about what do our families need? How can we support? And then coming out of that and back into school, really thinking about what's changed and what do we need now so we've had a real focus on well-being and um, which is always at the heart of what we do we've developed our behavior policy which is now a relationships and behavior policy and that's really um helped to shape our wider partnership working as well so in terms of curriculum for wales we did spend time when we were all learning from home looking through the aoles working in groups online um, trying to get our head around what it looked like but our focus was much more on supporting the children and the families. It wasn't a case of setting work online and, and people being able to access that. So there, this is what parental engage, engagement usually looks like at Mainzy. It often involves food um, because people come if you promise to feed them. Um, but our parental engagement then during lockdown looked a little bit more like this. So delivering devices and um, spacing out to do things when we were back at school. Um, this was our Roma choir, so they went around doing doorstep knocks and sang on the doorstep with families, just so that there was that link throughout the pandemic um, and families didn't feel like they were on their own. Um, so I've talked about wellbeing and nurture. It really is the heart of everything we do. Um, we talk at Mainzy about all behaviours, communication, and that really applies to everybody, not just the children, um, to the staff, to the families, you know. Everybody is communicating with you in some way, even if they're not saying anything. So we sort of use that to, to try and sort of then pick what do people need and, and where are people at the moment. So in terms of post-COVID, redefining our why and really thinking about where we needed to go. So we felt that there were new practices and new processes that we needed to, to put in place and the enhanced community engagement work has really taken off um, after COVID. The professional learning, um, our MER cycle has been stripped right back and based on professional trust and shared understanding. You know, we don't, as a leadership team, do anything without involving the staff. So book looks were all involved, you know, learning walks, everybody will be involved um, to aid that professional discussion. We've adopted um, some agile approaches to school improvement based on some work by um, Simon Breakspear, he's been working with the EAS, so our consortia. And again, we've stripped back some of our school improvement and our school improvement planning processes and really trying to create some time and space for high quality professional engagement. Um, and I talked about the Thinking Schools programme, so that's something we're involved with at the moment. So basic skills is always going to be our bread and butter. Um, and really, we've made sure post COVID that we're really clear about what our bread and butter for literacy, numeracy and digital is, as well as then thinking about nurture and wellbeing. So I've got an example here of one of our policies. Um, this is our maths policy. It will be updated now in the autumn term. We've tried to look at policies on a page 
so that they are visually appealing. You don't have pages and pages to read through, but really there is just an overview on one page. So just before I finish off and hands over to Sue, the biggest successes were really thinking around being able to build a curriculum to meet the needs of our pupils, and that will always shape our work now going forward. The mastery of the basic skills, the authentic context for learning, the way that we've moved forward with the staff development, and then thinking about the really purposeful practices of school improvement rather than the proving, the focus on the improving and making sure that that's um, what we're focused on rather than creating the evidence. So um, our key challenges were around timescales, um, the curriculum implementation and the ALN changes alongside a global pandemic were tricky. Being able to get high quality staff into school to replace staff who were not here was a real challenge. Community partnerships, whilst they're really strong, we were worried sometimes that we may be taking other staff away from the core purpose of teaching and learning. The same with funding. Um, so going forward, taking, taking a community to raise a child is going to be our focus going forward. And we know that we need to link with um, wider services, so police, NHS, social services, and really strengthening our cluster work. Implementing ALN changes is surely on everybody's agenda, so that's still what we're working through. Continuing to develop our curriculum and evolving practices in schools, so evolving our learner conversations, progress meetings, ALN clinics, and all of the things that we do to help support teachers and learners. And then the engagement program around metacognition and thinking and a bespoke PL for staff. So that's our journey. Um, you know, we're really excited heading into 22, uh, 2022. We certainly haven't got it all worked out, but we feel really refreshed to be able to focus on what our children, our families need and have the opportunity to shake that. Um, so that, that's, that's my journey. I'm Sue Roberts. I'm head teacher at a school for different, a primary school in Llandidno, so the other side of Wales compared to Joe. And I'm also an associate from cohort one with the academy. And I have to say at this point, you know, obviously I'm just getting to know Joe, but I think it's been a fantastic opportunity being an associate, just getting to know and meet people right the way across Wales. It's lovely. I've been so interested listening to Joe, and I have heard, you know, her talk before. So thanks, Joe, for that. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about our curriculum for Wales journey as well, the one that we've been on as a primary school. And as Tegwe said very, very early on, we're just at that start of the journey, all of us. And I think it's really important that we remember we're all at different stages, but actually it's quite an exciting time, really. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our journey, but also about the value, really, the importance it's been to us about our cluster collaboration. I'm sure you'll all agree it's been a long old year and we're nearly there. We've nearly done it. I think we should all be extremely proud of the amazing work that's gone on in our schools this year. I'm going to be completely honest and say that I've actually quite enjoyed the opportunity for our team to be really creative and innovative when looking at designing our curriculum. But honest as well in that I know we're still not there and there's a lot more that we need to do. So I'm a very logical person. I like things broken down. So that's what we've tried to do for our curriculum design. And the first question that we asked ourselves was, who are we designing this for? Our curriculum summary now, which obviously we need to be prepared, ready for September. And it's all about the child, all about the learner. That's the important thing going forward. But also we wanted to make our curriculum design at the summary that we're preparing. Interesting for our parents to find out just about what our school is really about. So I'm going to click on, this is a very busy page, a very busy page. But what this is, is our one page curriculum rationale, where we've tried to bring everything together. I said earlier, we were a school up in Tandidno. Right at the back there, this is a picture a child did a few years ago um, for our website. And it's the, the great horn there in the background with the goats. I'm sure you all think of um, uh, Flandidno and the goats. But there's our school there. We love that picture. So we thought, right, that's got to be at the heart of it. We've also got the flower there where you can see right at the top cluster collaboration, which is a massive part of our journey, massive part. We've also got our little four 
purpose squad over there. What we've realized along our journey is it's really important that we look, that children look, that we're looking for all of those four purposes within the child. So that's really, really important. Okay, so this has become a really great visual. So for our prospectus, for example, a school website, we've got a big banner outside the school. But when we were creating our design, our curriculum design, we decided that we'd break it down into stages. And that's what I'd sort of, the way I'd quite like to go through it with you um, this morning. So we started with the principles and purpose, as we've all done this year. We've all visited this vision and values. We've really got involved. We've got all stakeholders involved. We've had questionnaires out uh, into the community, really finding out so we can define our curriculum principles and vision and intentions across with all stakeholders. We're a school that's close to the old, as I've said, but we're literally how lucky we are to be able to walk across the road to the beach. We haven't got the biggest grounds, but we certainly do an awful lot of outdoor learning because we can walk across the road. We can go up the Orm, we can walk across the road to the beach. It's such an important part of our ethos as a school. I would say every class goes over to the beach at least once a week for outdoor learning. Next page then, we have a little look, our entitlement and enhancement. So after clarifying our principles and purpose, we set out the learner offer. The why of the curriculum, Joe mentioned it several times there, the why, the what, the how, it's so important. Obviously, as all of our curriculums do, they contain the six areas of learning experience, they encompass the statements of what matters, reflect the principles of progression, etc, etc. But it's important that as a school, we've spent a lot of time on this, having a little look through. And then I've just put them on here, just as a reminder for all of us, those mandatory and statutory elements that we all need to ensure that we're including. And that's what we've done. Again, as a staff, we've broken things down. We've really got to grips and developed an understanding, really, of those mandatory elements. Then onto the interesting bit, the bit that makes your school your school. And for us, we started off by calling it non-negotiables. Now, in time for actually uh, providing our summary, we decided we don't actually like the word non-negotiables. And this came out as a cluster. We sat down around a table, we talked about it, and we decided to call it Kiryad Kalon, the heartbeat of our schools. So that's what we've done as a cluster. We've all used those things and we've identified them as a school. I haven't given you much context about our school as yet. That's in our summary, obviously, but we are a one form entry primary school. We are in a, an area of high deprivation, 51% free school meals. People don't re realize that at all about Flandidno, but there is a real pocket of deprivation here. So well-being, just as Joe mentioned earlier, is extremely important to us as a school. Our well-being, looking after, nurturing our pupils. One thing we do is a whole school and community project. We have an awful lot of involvement within the community. As well as being a mainstream primary school, we also have a resource space or a provision that we run for children, learners with autism. So autism is a real passion for us as a school. All our children in all, all the classes have a good understanding and knowledge of how to support learners with ASD. So our whole school projects, this year, you can see that caravan in the middle and you're probably thinking it's a bit crazy. Why have they got an old caravan there? It's been a really big project. The children bought the caravan for 300 pounds off eBay. It was a wreck basically, but wow, they've had fun doing it up. It's inside, it's now a well-being area with bean bags and cushions for, it's a craft area where they can go and chat and talk when they just need a little bit of space. That's what that is. And it also sparked their entrepreneurial project, which um, they've got going. 
you can see in the picture behind, there's a picture of a boat with a lot of children. That's a previous one. That was a pre-COVID one, but that was our whole school project that year where we got totally involved with boats, um, doing boats there. Um, um, oh, I, I could go on and on, but I won't because I know I'm conscious I haven't got an awful lot of time. But we always have a yearly or an annual project but it's whole school and community that we can really get to grips with and that will um, encourage our, entre our entrepreneurial skills, develop those of our learners. I've mentioned health and wellbeing. I won't dwell on that now. You all understand the importance of that. I've mentioned autism awareness. Every class has an autism awareness box. Children will see a child struggling within the class and will go and get something for the child to help them during the lessons. There's a real understanding and also we have autism ambassadors, ASD ambassadors, who go out into the community and really support and encourage the community to develop a further understanding, which is great. The next one then is Leadership for All. Leadership for All has been really, really important across our school, not just for the learners, but for our staff. Every member of staff in the school has a leadership role. All our teaching assistants, all our um, teachers, everybody within the school has a leadership uh, responsibility that they take ownership for. So that's enabled us as a school to ensure every single child across the school has an intervention of some form. So these are all different things that really get to grips with S as a school, our non-negotiables, non or our Kiriad Kalon. Mention choose creativity at the bottom there. That really helps with our well-being. It's um, something we researched. Some of our teaching assistants uh, did a little bit of inquiry work and found um, a process called choose creativity that's been running in America, and they've adapted it across our school. So these are all things that we expect our children to experience during their time with us at Fort Dethrim. We'll move on now to the next phase. And phase three, we're looking at breadth and balance. So you can see there, we collate a broad range of experiences, knowledge and skills. Um, we've really tried as a school to have teams supporting the organisation of this. I've got on the screen there an example of humanities, how we've broken that down. But we've also involved the community. Up in the north, we have regional groups and local groups working with where, where we really support each other to unpack the What Matters statements, to look at the progression, principles of progression, etc. And that's been really valuable to us uh, across this last year. I noticed that Joe also mentioned those one page policies. We've done that, Joe, too. It's been so useful staff far more likely to use these and really get into depth. Everything on a page. Really, really uh, interesting that, that Joe's done that as well. Moving on to the next page. These are a few more ideas, really. They're just thrown up on the screen. Um, we Again, we looked at the 12 pedagogical principles. We've um, really split those up, had a, had a good look at how it works for us as a school. We've also got a, a, a values overview where we've looked at our six values, be honest, be kind, be happy, et cetera, et cetera. We've looked at how the four purposes, how they're at the heart of the curriculum and how they fit into them. But also we've looked at the UK rights of the child. We looked at the global goals and we've been able to link everything within our planning. We've also done some uh, progression maps. And this has been really good with the secondary school now because already they've decided we've worked with them, we've shown them, and that's going to continue now. So we've got that continuum from three to 16, which is so important. Phase four, moving on. This is the, the bit that we've really enjoyed experimenting with this year, um, the pedagogy perspective. So we've decided as a school, and all schools are different, uh, just across our cluster, we're doing it in different ways, but we've decided with our children, the, the discipline specific knowledge and skills by directly teaching them those at the start of each day in the mastery. So mastery is a big thing for us as, in, as a school, the languages and mathematics. And then the rest of the day, 
we follow a big question. In the, in the classroom, all the classrooms across the school, we've got learning zones. So it's very much a foundation phase approach across the school, but all classrooms have six learning zones, math zone, language zone, discovery zone, happy zone, digital zone and creative zone, which link in to the AOLEs, but cross over as well. And we've adopted this foundation phase approach with big questions. Those sessions involve focus group tasks with the teacher. And during that time, other learners then are exploring challenges within the other learning zones. And that's giving them the opportunity to develop and enhance their learning while developing their independent skills, of course. And for that part of the day, that's very much the learners can present their work in their own unique personal ways. So whatever way suits them. And of course, I've mentioned there at the bottom the importance of pupil voice. It is really, really important that those learners have a say in what's going on. So we have epic sessions, everyone planning in class to ensure that happens. And you can see there from the pictures, we've got a very low stimulus within our classrooms. We've gone for the white, blue and grey and the colour comes in there from display. But we've, we've done a little bit of research this, looked at other schools and it's been really interesting um, to the impact already that we've been able to measure on the children. I won't dwell on this, I'm going to move on to the end because I know time is, is coming up now. Inclusiveness, massive for us really, really important. And these are just some of the things that we do at school. A lot of them you will all be uh, using and familiar with, I'm sure. Just moving on to phase five now with progression and assessment. I put these on one slide there to show you. This is the tricky bit. I think this is the bit that we all need to develop. You know, we're still trying things out here. And we have decided as a school to use Type 360 this year. Not sure if that's the right way to go, but right now we just want something just to help support support us through. What we have done, we've appointed leaders of learning for each phase. Now, obviously, we want to see the children, the learners develop at um, their own rate, what's ready for them. But we've just loosely appointed, um, we've got an explorers, adventurers and innovators. We want to get away from saying progression step one, progression step two, etc. So. We've got in reception, I've got a leader of learning for the explorers. In Bling and Tree, year three, we've got a leader of learning for the adventurers. And then in Bling and Claire, year six, we've got a leader of learning for the innovators. And then the leader of learners, leader of learning, sorry, are responsible for supporting that curriculum design. And just, they help then the SLT to contribute to the bigger picture so that we can then try and ensure continuity and progression across the whole school. Right, I'm just nearly finished, Nia. I'll come in now with you, but I just wanted to talk about how important it's been for us as a school to be involved as a cluster. I'm very, very lucky. We've got a fantastic cluster over here in Clendidno. We've used the petal. It works out quite nicely for us. Um, the petals there of the flower. We've got seven primary schools and then we've got a school John Bright, which is the secondary school in the centre there. We've been working really closely together now for probably, gosh, four or five years before COVID, where we'd already started using the school partnership programme. We'd had training from EDT and we've developed um, uh, a really trusting relationship and collaboration and that has been so valuable on our curriculum for Wales journey so I'll just just you can see here on the screen sorry um what we've got we've got cluster collaboration there where we share our vision I'll talk in a minute about that we represent our community together we're all serving that same community so it's so important that we're supporting our learners in that way Pupil-led inquiry and teacher action research. We're doing things together. We're involved with Bangor University, Warwick University. So we've got lots of things going on. The engaging learning environment, we've talked about that. Again, we support each other. We go out to each other's schools using the school partnership programme to support and to be accountable to each other, really. 
facilitation of teaching and learning um, and then pupil voice teacher coaching coaching has been a real key area for us as well and then of course engaging learning experiences and as a cluster we do a lot together and come together to share these experiences and to learn from each other we have a newsletter a cluster newsletter that we bring out where we keep each other up to date we make sure there's no gaps anywhere i know you can't see those or or read them properly but just to give you a bit of a taste or a bit of a flavor of what we're doing as as a cluster so we're making sure that there's no gaps that all our schools know what's going on in terms of curriculum development and help and support so our leaders for example our humanity leaders or um AOLE leads or our um, health and wellbeing leads, they meet together on a regular basis across all the schools to help and support uh, in terms of unpacking uh, what matters statements, etc. Our development plan, school development plan, again, we have one shared priority, which is collaborative professionalism. And this, so this has been this last year, there's far more to it, I'm just giving you a, an idea of what it looks like. And then next year, we'll be adapting and moving on to the next aspect. So, for example, this term, for the school partnership programme, we've all been out to each other's schools. We've all had a focus, something to do with the curriculum for Wales that we wanted to develop as an individual school. And then we've held staff room, uh, staff meetings. Our middle leaders have basically facilitated staff meetings to help support schools come up with um, opportunities to move forward and then just to finish the top here we've got a website and I was going to show you that but there's no time but our website is for all of us where we share everything so our cluster curriculum for Wales journey on here these are our curriculum for Wales summaries we've all last week um, we all shared we got together and we've shared them as a cluster Wow, it was so amazing just to listen to each other. It was so excited and exciting and we really enjoyed sharing with each other how different our schools are, but then how similar and how important it is that we work together with our local secondary schools, got John Bright, to ensure, because those learners will be going to John Bright's. So that was really valuable to have staff there from the secondary school as well to talk to us to help us think ahead so we've got so many plans for next year now moving forward again but really really lovely idea to share your um, summaries and then just underneath the commonwealth Games showcase this was something a couple of weeks ago we trialed some curriculum for wales working aoles we had a topic for two weeks all the schools and then we came together and just had a little look to see exactly what everybody had come up with, but it's been really, really valuable uh, and really useful. Now that was a real whistle top stop tour. So I'm going to stop now, Mia, if that's okay, and pass back to you. I will stop sharing my screen now. Massive welcome Val to both you and Joe for your really inspirational presentations. I think we can all agree that you've both given us a, a great insight into your schools. I really feel like I know your schools a little bit better now um, and your schools are very different from each other, but there's some, some like Sue just mentioned about the similarities, actually, even though a school can be very different, there are huge similarities of inclusion, of community, of uh, learner focused um, pedagogy. Um, so we've got lots of questions actually for you both and we've got about 15 minutes now of a Q&A so I think we'll we'll get started and Alwyn, um, Alwyn we're going to kick off with Alwyn who is one of our associates here. Alwyn you've got a question and it can be directed to both of you so off you go Alwyn, thank you. Hello Borida, um, Thank you both for your presentations. Um, I'm in awe, to be honest, of everything that you've done. And I'm sure for some of us that are on the journey, it is a journey and we need to remember we're all at different stages. So um, my question is going to be, um, what has been the most successful thing that, you, what's the standout 
I think I think I know what Sue's answer is going to be. It's probably the caravan, but I'm not sure. I'll wait to see. Um, now then, what's going to be the most standout, the most brilliant thing that you would um, say that you've done? Is that, is that really hard? Oh, if you had to choose just one. Okay, I'll, I'll, I've got two, but I'll choose one. I think the changing over from the performance management structure over to the professional discussions was really valuable because I think that what um, my leadership team felt was that we were just trying to fill in the boxes on the template rather than actually really engage in the discussion. And, um, you know, we've been doing that for about four years now and there's still things that we want to change and still things that we want to tweak. But, you know, we've we've come right away from sort of the whole school staff meetings. Um, yes, there's a place for that and there's times when we have whole school training, but that's a lot less than it ever was. Um, I think COVID working on teams definitely sort of highlighted that actually it's important to hear everybody's voice. And sometimes in those big um, environments, we've got about 60 staff. You know, there are people that don't want to put their hands up or offer their ideas in a group of 60, but they will do so in a group of five or six. So, you know, that whole sort of culture around how we learn as professionals has changed. And I think that was really needed and has been really valuable. Sue? Do you want me to come in there now? For me, and I've said it really, I'm, I'm sure. As much as the caravan is great, it, oh, when it's not the caravan, okay. <laughs> no, for me, it is without a doubt been the cluster work. I, I can't tell you, something has switched this year and we're now, we don't need to play safe with each other. We trust each other, to be honest. I don't know whether I should say it really, but you know, sometimes when external people are coming into your school, you're, we're all a little bit on edge, aren't we? I'm gonna word it like that, you all know what I mean. But actually, we've now, we've got open doors with, with our cluster of schools, the fact that we can share experiences, be honest and support each other. That to me has been the highlight because all of that is going to impact on our learners. Thanks, Ollie. Thanks, Ollie, for your question. I'm going to move on now to Gavin. Gavin's from the youth work sector and he's got a question for you, Joe. Hi, Joe. Um... First of all, thank you both. Um, I've had the pleasure of listening to you both talk about your curriculum journey, so it was just as pleasurable today. Uh, Joe, obviously being from the youth work sector, my, my question's focused around kind of the community aspect, and I, it's, my question's in three parts. Uh, you talked about strong links with the community and community partners. I was just wondering um, how easy it was to make those links, or was it challenges in kind of linking in with, with relevant partners? Um, second part of the question really is you, you mentioned that you, as part of that work, staff were being taken away from some of the core purposes. Just interested in terms of, you know, is that time away from the class? Is that time after school? How does that look? Um, but the third bit to sort of bring it back together and link back to uh, the curriculum, which is why we're here this morning, is that work with the community, whether that's during the daytime or after school, is there any impact, do you think, with the work from these partners that links directly into uh, the, the, the new curriculum and what you're trying to achieve? I think I feel like I'm being interviewed. Sorry. <laughs> okay, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully I can answer it all. So um, so I'll, at the beginning, so you asked about the community partners, was that easy or hard? Both. Um, so there were some partners that were really easy to engage with. They were really keen to make those links. Um, Pre-COVID, we established something we were just calling a main meeting where we invited anybody from the community who wanted to come in and have a voice. Um, and I think the, the third meeting we had, we had so many people, we couldn't fit them all in the room. So um, there's lots of people in the Mainzy community that want to make a difference. There's lots of voluntary groups um, and lots of sort of smaller organizations. So engaging with them was really easy, um, but sometimes that didn't always fit our agenda. Um, so we, what we find was then the partners that have helped us to really make a difference um, were more difficult to engage with because I guess they didn't see the value perhaps in working in the way that we wanted them to work. So, so I'll give you an example. Um, you know, I talked about the NHS Peace and Social Services. They were three services that we felt that we really needed to join up um, 
with to be able to support our community. The Roma community in particular, but not only the Roma community, are very mistrusting of services. Um, so, you know, they'll come to things at school and they'll engage with things that school put on, but they would never report a crime or, or seek any help and advice elsewhere. Um, so actually engaging with, with the wider partners has been useful. So the NHS, for example, now run um, monthly health drop-ins at the school. Um, and there's a big long queue for the monthly health drop-ins because some of our families won't or can't access health appointments in other places. So, you know, that's certainly impacted on our, on our school community, not necessarily the new curriculum journey, but certainly sort of the wider aspect of, of children having their health needs met. And, you know, they will help with things like um, head lice. Um, we have huge head lice problems and parents are not supported to be able to, to do that. So something that's fallen to school, but that is something that the health teams will pick up. So that's just one example. Um, and our partnerships have been growing and developing over a number of years. So it hasn't just been something that's happened overnight. Um, we've also engaged with local religious leaders um, and I'm not going to get into the whole RSE debate at the moment, but it's, you know, it's around and it's rumbling on, you know, all over Wales, I'm sure. But that's been really helpful in engaging with the religious leaders to actually get the correct messages out there and the correct messages then delivered through the churches and through the mosques around what we're actually teaching and what we're actually not teaching. Um, so that's been really useful. And we have a monthly peace assembly now led by a local religious leader um, from, from different faiths. Um, so that's been, been really, really valuable. Um, and it's also then led on to other partnerships. So in terms of when I talked about staff being taken away from their roles, I've got one member of staff at the moment that's working sort of evenings, weekends, um, and, and HR is sort of a few times sort of heft and said oh gosh Joe you know what's happening with this member of staff um, and, and you know in terms of inputting the hours that she works into the systems that we've got it, it doesn't quite work out um, and obviously if she's not in school at school time then she's not actually impacting on the teaching and learning but what she is impacting on is the attendance of children then coming to school because she's engaging with them in sort of um, social activities, but then being able to have those informal discussions. And she's actually now moving into the community manager role. Um, we've been fortunate to get some funding, um, it's Welsh Government funding coming through Newport um, to fund the community manager. So she's gonna be working across schools within our cluster initially, and then hopefully wider across, um, across Newport. But you know, we've got other plans then for staff to backfill some of the work that she's been doing, but it's not always within the traditional school time. So I guess that's where that call comes from. Um, and then you talked about impact. The impact has been huge. So the level of trust amongst our parents and community has gone um, much higher. Um, and then when you're having difficult conversations around RSE or difficult conversations around, you know, why the children are only attending a certain amount of the time, you've got better relationships because they, they've got an understanding that you're welcoming them, you're embracing their culture, their religion, you know, what's valuable to them. And, and just that feeling that everybody's welcome and, and staff, you know, are great at doing that, but the parents comment on it all the time that actually that, that really makes them feel at home, it makes them feel safe, it makes them feel comfortable. Um, that creates work then because they come to us with a whole host of issues that want they want us to sort out, hence the partnership working, so it's a bit of a cycle. So Gavin, I hope I've answered it all, but I could talk about community and partnerships all day. <laughs> that, no, that's brilliant. I really appreciate that, Joe. Thank you. Thanks for your question, Gavin. Um, we've got some really good questions coming here in the chat. So maybe, Sue, um, I'll direct this one at you. It's from Sally Llewellyn from the Mid Wales Partnership. And Sally's asking, are teaching assistants included in your cluster collaboration discussions? I think we all agree that their views are extremely valuable, but sometimes it can be difficult to, uh, sorry, it's gone up my screen. Um, to provide joint professional learning opportunities on Curriculum for Wales. How do you manage this? Uh, that's absolutely, Sally, totally agree. But we, you know, it is difficult, but we do. It's really, really important that we get those views. You know, those teaching assistants in our, our school are just vital. They, we, we can't do without them nowadays. We can't. Um, I've, as I said to you earlier, Leadership for All, every teaching assistant across our school has a leadership um, responsibility. In terms of the cluster, we do try, for example, in the school partnership programme, we organised an event at the secondary school with all staff, teachers, teaching assistants, and we did that in place of our staff meeting. 
um, to, to involve everybody, to let everybody know exactly what we were doing and why we were doing it. So I'm going to use that as a little bit of an example. One school, for example, with main names, but they wanted um, to develop their progression and assessment um, processes. So that was what we, we looked at. So a few of us heads went in, we spent the day with staff there, but we talked to teachers, we talked to learners, we talked to the teaching assistants to find out their perspective as well about the curriculum moving forward. What happens then with the school partnership program, um, the process, once we as heads have spent the day, we then talk with middle leaders and they present at a staff meeting. So it, it's one of your you know, weekly staff meetings. We limit it, it must not go over an hour. And they, they basically facilitate using all the facilitation techniques and coaching techniques that we've got so that it's not middle leaders from other schools coming in and saying, oh, this is how you should do it. This is what we do in our school. It's not about that. It's about them facilitating. So getting the teachers and teaching assistants to come up with ways forward for that particular school. And what we've done now, we've been able through this term to build up a bank of resources. So we've got one on progression. We've got one on um, assessment. It, it, it really is valuable. But to answer your question, Sally, it is difficult because, you know, they work so hard, our teaching assistants, and I'm sorry, they're, they're not paid fantastically. We all know that. But I try to ensure that they have time. One of the things we have done, um, we use the, the TALP training, teaching assistance learning pathway. Um, and we hold that for our cluster on site here. So we've got uh, one of our staff is, is trained um, to deliver that. So whenever that happens, they also are getting that information shared about um, curriculum, curriculum reform. So thank you. I don't know whether I've answered it or not, but we're getting there. It's still a journey. Thanks, Sue. Um, we've got a question here from Paul. Paul Keane, are you able to take yourself off mute, Paul? And I'm off mute, Mia. Hello. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks, Joe. Thanks, Sue. Um, uh, yeah, so it reminds me of a techie kind of question just around, uh, to Sue mainly, around the, the pedagogical principles um, and just how you've used them. We're kind of really grappling with that in our school as to whether you kind of use them simultaneously, whether you focus on a small number year on year. How have you kind of embedded on them? You touched on it already, but if you could just draw that out a bit more, that'd be brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, it is a tricky one, you know, those pedagogical principles, to be honest with you. If you actually ask your staff to name them, they, they will struggle. It, it, it's, it's one of those, I think we're still playing with it. You know, people will, will come up with the main ones straight away, won't they? But yeah, we've broken them down now, Paul. We did quite a lot of work in a staff meeting. Um, we really got to grips with them and we have. We're looking at them more individual or more in groups. I think that's how we're looking at them. And we're trying to map it out across our planning. Again, I'm being honest with you, it's early days. And I think that's what all of us have got to remember. Um, I don't know if we're sharing these... Uh, screens afterwards sorry the presentations but you can have a look I think I did show one didn't I how we've sort of mapped it out the pedagogical principles how we've looked and we've tied it into different things so we could share that with you um at some point but I've got no direct answer there Paul I'll be honest with you but we've we've certainly in staff meetings broken them up and look how we can develop them in groups um Thank you, Sue, and thank you, Joe. We've um, we've got lots of questions that we haven't answered, so apologies if you've posted one and uh, we haven't come to it. But what we'll aim to do is um, go back to those questions and provide answers later on. Uh, we're going to be going into breakout rooms shortly uh, for about 10, 15 minutes. And what we'd like you to do in your in your groups is talk about um, your curriculum in your schools. And we want you to look back with pride. What have you been doing really well? And it doesn't matter where you are on your curriculum journey, whether you're really new to it or whether you've been doing it for a good few years, we don't want that to be at the forefront of your mind. What have you been working on recently that you're really proud of? And what are you looking forward to working on in terms of the curriculum in the next academic year? What are you optimistic about? So one thing, looking back with pride, and then looking forward with optimism. 
And if you can see in the chat, there's a Jamboard there. We'd like you to open that Jamboard now before you go into your breakout rooms. And you can re record your discussions um, on that Jamboard. So looking back with pride, looking forward with optimism. And you'll be in those breakout rooms for about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. So it'll be a lovely opportunity for you to reflect with peers from across Wales on, on your curriculum. So yeah, open that Jamboard now before, before you go into your breakout room. And we, we look forward to seeing you in about 10 minutes and we can pick out some of the highlights there of your conversations. So Charlotte or Geraint, if you could pop open the breakout rooms, please. I um, hope you've had a, a, a useful uh, 10 minutes in your breakout rooms, reflecting on the presentations and your own work in your, in your schools and just enjoyed some of that sort of well-being space in a way uh, with peers from across Wales. Just going to take a couple of minutes to reflect on some of your, your thoughts here on the Jamboard. Don't worry if you haven't written anything yet, these jam boards will be open um, for uh, the next few days and you can add your thoughts uh, to these um, as you think of them. So just wanted to pick out on some of them. Obviously, I don't know who's written them specifically. Um, so we can see here that again, you know, time is always an issue, so we need to remain flexible. Um, some of the positive ones, engagement, designing a curriculum that captures the children's attention. Um, developing use of foundation phase pedagogy across the phases. We see, we're hearing a lot of um, discussion now around this form of pedagogy in, in different networks that we're, that we're being in. Um, great to see many similarities with the presenting schools. Love the A4 policies on a page. So I know that uh, Sue and Joe will be happy to share their presentations once photographs of children uh, obviously have been removed, but they are happy to share that work. So then you can start um, using some of those resources yourself and adapting them to your own settings. Proud of emphasis on pedagogy with a focus on these and in planning and professional discussions. Uh, making learning purposeful and developing life skills. Improved cluster collaboration. I know Sue talked in depth about that and uh, working with the local authority as well and the on the regions in uh, terms of doing that. Wellbeing, celebrating a curriculum where wellbeing is at the heart of everything we do. Um, just a couple more then. Staff have created a working wall with the journey of our development on the, on the main corridor. So some of the things that are happening in your schools as well. So really nice to hear about your own practices in your, in your settings. Optimism, work with consortia has given a clear focus for journey ahead where um, WH and what matters statements are unpicked and used in question-based topics. So again, really nice to hear about those professional relationships being, being built between the tiers, between schools and the regional consortia, really positive there. Thank you. Please do keep adding your thoughts to this Jamboard. We will be collating all this feedback and we will be using it to inform all our future curriculum work. So this feedback is really important to us, um, ensuring that we are creating uh, resources and events that, that you really need. So uh, really appreciate your feedback on that. What we're going to be doing now, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. We're going to move on now to um, a recording from Alan Jones. So Alan Jones is a secondee at uh, the Welsh Government at the moment. He's a professional advisor on curriculum and assessment. And he's put together, he was going to be with us, but unfortunately his connection where he is is a little bit unsteady. So we do have a pre-recording. And he's going to talk, be talking about leading assessment and progression. So Geraint, if you could, or Charlotte, if you could uh, press play on that. Thank you. Por da higid an anfodis as chingu i liohon, mae'n amlog bod uh, y we yn y cyfrysterol yn yr albam ddim wedi cynnau tai fi i uh, fod yn fyw. Um, felly, recordiad byr just i gyflwyno'n hunan, Alan Jones, penneth gynrythoiol Ysgol Estrade, um, Ysgol Iwchradd Cyfrwng Gymraeg yn Lanelli. Roi ar hyn o bryd ar sycondiad fel ymgynghwredd proffesiynol um, i teamoedd curriculum ac asesu uh, Llywodraeth Cymru. Uh, Nid i paratoi uh, fel tîm 
adnoddau ategol i, I gynorthwyo y broses nawr o falle ystyried uh, cynnydd a gysesu um, dysgwyr uh, yn, yn benodol i chi fel arweinwyr ysgol um, wrth ystyried nawr yr um, canllawiau gwella ysgol sydd newydd iddyn rhyd rhai hefyd. Felly mae'r adnoddau ategol i ryw raddau yn ceisio plethu lot o negeseion a, a falle tynnu tynnu i, I, I bisiau ychydig o'r framwaith a falle tri ar esbonio pethau mewn ffyrdd ychydig fwy um, clir I, I, I ysgol a i arweinydd ysgol i yw ystyried nhw. Good morning everyone. If you're watching this, it suggests that arrangements uh, in Scotland have not allowed me to uh, be with you live this morning. Um, just a little pre-recorded introduction. My name is Alan Jones. I'm an assistant head teacher at Ysgol Estrada, Welsh Medium Secondary in uh, Llanelli. Uh, currently on secondment as a professional advisor to the curriculum and assessment teams in Welsh Government. And as teams, we've been working to try to provide some supportive materials for schools over the last uh, month or two. Uh, they've not so long and it's now been released um, and really they seek to, to, to make some connections and draw some links between the school improvement guidance that's recently been uh, released and for school leaders just sort of understanding how curriculum design progression and assessment can be considered within the light of um, school improvement and evaluation activities so I'll be taking you through some of these resources during the presentation and I hope that you'll find them useful and obviously look forward to to hearing any any uh, comments as to how we can refine and update those um, and and if you've got any instances of of good practice that you'd like to share please get in touch and we'd love to come and video you um, and, and capture some of those moments to share with other schools diolch Okay, felly mae'r deunydd y tegol newydd ar gael ar hub. The support materials are available on hub. I'll just show you how to navigate through to them. It's just simply a matter of clicking on the Curriculum for Wales, Curriculum Ni Gymru um, tab through to the home page and you'll see the supported materials are um, located right at the top um, of a page that I'm sure you're familiar with. So it's just a matter of clicking on the Learn More Agro Rebordeth and it takes you to the supported materials home page. It's split up into four sections. The first page, as you'll see, is where the supported materials are housed. If you click on the second section, it takes you to some relevant guidance and information, which is some of the higher level um, documentation that relates to these aspects. Then there are some workshops and activities, which is a section that will develop further, but at the moment um, has some of the national network conversations contained within it. And then some case studies with some examples of some schools tackling these issues. So the supported materials uh, homepage starts with a context section which just draws out the centrality of progression um, which is at the heart of our curriculum for Wales um, and it just explains a little bit about the interrelationship between these really important high level principles of progression and statements of what matters and then how the descriptions of learning fit into that jigsaw. And then as you scroll down, what you'll find is that each of the supported materials is available through the link. And then underneath is a, a short description of what the supported material does. Um, and from that, obviously, you can um, make a decision as to who you might direct to consider it, um, when it might be used and how then within the school or setting that, um, that issue can be tackled. Just pausing for a moment, if you consider the um, supporting materials when you've had a chance to do so, um, hopefully one of the consistent uh, themes or set of consistency themes that you'll see uh, running through them is um, the, first of all, that sort of interrelationship between curriculum design, progression and assessing progress and those questions which are, are shown on the slide um, in front of you now in terms of really getting us to, to sort of challenge ourselves and really unpick those uh, essential elements um, and then the centrality, I suppose, of um, progression and how the principles of progression can potentially give, it, give us that a shared understanding and shared um, narrative around what progression can look and feel like as we start to explore this then more specifically um, within our school setting um, and then obviously within the, the different areas of learning and experience. But again, these two themes are things that I think will um, you will feel as you read through the supported materials. And with that in mind, I suppose the, the supported materials begin with designing a curriculum with purpose as the, uh, the first element. If I click on um, this section just for us to open up and have a look at the resource itself. 
um, and having done uh, that what I will do now is to pass over to my colleague Yvonne who is also an assistant head teacher on Scotland with Welsh Government. I'll let her introduce herself in a moment who will talk you through the thinking um, with regards to this particular material. Hello, my name is Yvonne roberts Ablett, and I'm currently on secondment as a professional advisor to Welsh Government from Fitzalan High School in Cardiff. So this resource is designed to support um, all practitioners in schools. So the principles of, of purpose-led curriculum and assessment design can be used by school teachers in their classrooms, middle leaders when thinking about designing curriculum areas, as well as senior leaders thinking about designing their curriculum for school. The idea really is to use the principles of purpose-led curriculum and assessment design in all of the choices that you make in your school. So, for example, we always start here with a series of questions and considering the idea that school curriculum in Wales is now everything a learner experiences in pursuit of the four purposes and really asks people to think about how they're using the Curriculum for Wales framework to support that idea of purpose-led learning. In particular, that really supports the ideas of the principles of progression and being able to identify exactly what it is that you want for that learning experience and how that is enabling children to, to make progress in their learning. At that point, you need to then think about well, what is the acceptable level of evidence? How will I actually know when that learning has happened? And that then supports being able to design really high quality assessment opportunities with curriculum and assessment design coming hand in hand to support that learning. Finally, then we're thinking about at that point, the activities and the tasks and the resources that we may use when we've really got a good idea about the purpose of the learning and what progress we expect our learners to make. The second part of this resource then helps you to support how you would quality assure that curriculum and assessment design really asking questions about being a, a shared understanding of progress and a shared understanding of the aims and objectives of the learning that happens in our schools and settings. It really asks us to think about the desired understanding or understandings, really get into the essence of learning. So rather than it being a case of we know exactly what we want the children to do or the activities, what is the learning that we want from that and how then can we be in a position where we design the curriculum the learning and the assessment opportunities that really get to the essence of that learning. And really it's an opportunity to then think about whether everything it is that we're doing, whether that be on a lesson to lesson basis, whether that be on a sequence of lessons or whether that be our curriculum across the school. How are we really ensuring that all of our planning is planned with purpose in mind and enabling our learners to achieve the four purposes? OK, so if we return to the support and materials homepage, I think at that point it's pertinent to consider as a school leader um, the school as a whole and potentially the way that the principles of progression can provide a support um, for sort of self-evaluation and improvement activities around this understanding of progression and how curriculum design progression and assessing pro progress then fits together. Um, so if we click on the principles of progression resource and open that up, just have a quick look at that. Much of the thinking behind this particular material was really to provide the principles of progression in a language which um, would allow school leaders to investigate uh, the existence of those and the feeling of those principles of progression within their school or setting. So they've been framed, um, as you'll see within this supported material, as investigative questions. I'll just pause on uh, increasing learner effectiveness as an example. So the section in green is essentially the wording from the uh, Curriculum for Wales framework for this principle of progression, but just reframed as investigative questions, uh, just grammatically changed. And then there are some ideas and prompts at the bottom just to consider and provoke some thought and conversation within school um, or setting around the types of more school related things that could fall within that category, within that principle. So you can see this example here, reference to the sort of barriers of learning, to questioning, to really important um, that we tackle metacognition and developing self-regulated learners and this principle of progression can help us to think about that and likewise then for each of the individual principles some prompts and some investigative uh, questions that can help us just to draw out those really essential elements within our school um, and then towards the bottom just that 
making sure that we've got that ability to join the dots between the national resource and the prompts that are contained within there. So this would be, I suppose, a resource that we could, if we were using the national uh, resource as a, as a mechanism for us school self-evaluation and improvement activities, and we really wanted to consider learner uh, progress across the school, this would be an additional um, layer, if you like, of prompts and considerations for us beyond the, what sits within the resource itself, as I think that the, the rationale of the resource always was. And then, as you can see, for, for sort of more uh, general leadership support, we've got the link straight back to the Leadership Academy's um, uh, web page there. Linked to that supporting material, I'm sure for you as school leaders will be um, of interest, the, the one that's situated at the bottom, self-evaluation and improvement with a focus on learner progress, accessed in the same way, but I've opened it ready on another tab. Uh, and from that perspective, this supporting material is an attempt to, to simplify the links, I suppose, between the new school improvement guidance, um, what exists within the national resources of support uh, to to uh, to assist schools in their uh, evaluation and improvement activities, how progression curriculum design and assessing progression um, work in conjunction with each other, the centrality of those principles of progression and how they can support schools answering those key questions, and fundamentally then where that sits within the um, evaluation and improvement cycle uh, and how schools clearly now challenging themselves around um, the types of activities, quality assurance, evaluation and improvement activities that will take place in order to understand and, and, and refine and improve understandings of progression uh, and challenge things like understanding assessment and practitioners assessment literacy in really drawing out these important aspects through uh, a real understanding of, of, of curriculum design and how that facilitates uh, progression. And as we move through um, th the support here, it links naturally back through to those more sort of refined questions. It, it challenges us to think about those principles of progression in that sort of investigative manner and hopefully provide some element of support in terms of navigating through from school improvement guidance um, all the way through the national resource if it's something that particularly a school leader has, has decided to use in their evaluation and improvement um, structures and allows us to, to sort of consider those principles of progression in, in that manner. Being conscious of time, I've skipped th straight through here now to the developing a shared understanding of progression um, supporting material. And just want to fix on this one uh, slide. The supporting material is there really just to help us think about how to tackle um, our uh, collaborative work around developing a shared understanding of progression and seeing really that it can relate itself very closely to a lot of the arrangements that exist already. So within school, we're going to be tackling these two key questions around what progress looks like and what the pace of progress looks and feels like for our learners. And we're going to be having those conversations with our cluster um, within meetings that I'm sure are, are familiar um, and are already within our calendar, but potentially need to be reframed and rethought uh, in terms of both regularity, how they're facilitated, the individuals involved and then uh, you know development of further um, links between um, schools and settings and other peers and how uh, those sort of relationships could be developed further now as we tackle uh, an understanding of curriculum design progression and assessing learner progress um, so that we can have that sort of check and balance between schools and settings um, moving forward. And finally, then we come to assessing learner progress with some supporting materials accessible through this link. OK, so if we look at the uh, assessment in the Curriculum for Wales supporting materials, it draws, first of all, uh, attention to the roles of assessment and purpose and principles, um, and then immediately makes us consider uh, assessing progress in the light of this interrelationship between curriculum design progression and assessing progress. Some really interesting ways of thinking about assessing in different ways and challenging ourselves around as practitioners our sort of assessment literacy. The interrelationship between those three is a, is a consistent theme and then what we've try to do within these supporting materials is just to summarize some of the um, main points raised within the curriculum framework that relate to uh, assessment arrangements and then just try to draw um, the line through from the principles of progression to our considerations of assessment. So the example here is with 
the supporting individuals on a, an ongoing day-to-day -day basis and thinking about their developing effectiveness as learners and this is really where we can sort of think about our formative assessment and how it supports learner progress through from uh, simply being affiliated and feeling part of the of, of the learning through to being uh, more autonomous and taking more responsibility and independence through to them becoming agents of their own learning and then we can see could draw the lines to to sort of self-regulated learning as 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 a a marker of progression and then considering assessment through the lens of these principles of progression can just challenge your thinking around um, uh, assessing progress in the different mechanisms and ways that we can do that along then with really challenging us to think about real understanding through application so rich tasks that really draw out those connections between um to what's been learned the knowledge and skills and how we can use those in 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 rich uh, unique tasks challenging learners to take that understanding and use it uh, proactively and then as we move through this we, we just stop to pause and think that that moment where we look to identify and capture and reflect on progress over time we can consider these two elements of progression the holistic learner or learning progression um, via the the principles of progression being a great lens for that and then really challenging practitioner expectation around that individualized uh, understanding of the learner the curriculum that's been designed and therefore um, sort of having a, um, a, a uh, quality assurance processes that really ensure that there's enough rigor, challenge and ambition in the expectations that we have for those learners on an individual basis uh, that we can also then quality assure whether our curriculum allows those uh, those challenges and, um, and, and that sort of development and progression in the way that we want. And then I suppose to close the, res the, the support material just illustrates how um, you know there can be a developing language of sort of a of progression around these principles which allow us to draw on these things that we we really consider should matter Well, as I say, I hope you found that useful and give you the well on and the not all as my girl in Russell what if any comments or um, or uh, suggestions please feel free to contact me on the email address shown or that can be shared if it's not shown uh, it can be shared with you and um, as I say, I hope you found them useful. I hope you have a restful summer uh, and uh, look forward to making contact with, uh, with many of you now in the autumn term um, as we face these uh, new challenges together. Thank you. Diolch yn fawr iawn i Alun um, ac i Yvonne um, am y cyflwyniad um, yna. Um, I ni nawr yn mynd i symud i stafelloedd trafod. Um, Cyn i ni wneud hynny, dwi'n gallu gweld bod yna gwestiwn yn wedi codi um, yn y chat. Um, a diolch i uh, Andy um, am y cwestiwn ag i rhywun arall o'r enw bciw.ss.suite. Um, mewn y mateb i rhai o'r cwestiwn yna, uh, byddwn ni'n sicr yn cymryd pob cwestiwn i wedi uh, derbyn heddiw i ffwrdd ac yn dod o hyd i ffwrdd i ateb y cwestiwn yna um, um, er mwyn i chi gael uh, gwybod um, uh, 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 er atebion wrth gwrs. Um, ateb um, i, i, i'r ail gwestiwn, um, er ddogfen, what is the name of the assessment document, please? School Improvement Guidance, uh, Framework for Evaluation Improvement and Accountability, and can be found on the Welsh Government uh, website. So we'll move into breakout rooms now. Um, and at this point, um, it's an opportunity uh, once again for you to talk to um, to other leaders um, from across Wales and taking that theme of looking back with pride but looking forward with optimism um, from what you've heard um, from our presenters and in your breakout rooms already go into those rooms now and consider what do we need in September or the autumn term and if you can pop that onto the Jamboard, we will find that really useful. And it might be that you need some support in, in you know, in different different areas. Um, we'll take that away and we'll work with the regions around how that is shaped. Um, and we will work on your behalf then to ensure that we provide for you going forward. So in this session, it's the looking forward with optimism. You know, what are the next steps? What are you going to be doing? And what areas would you like some uh, additional uh, support um, with? Felly, diolch geraint, os wyt ti'n gallu rhoi pawb mewn i'r stafelloedd.
Chris and all bow. Welcome back, everybody. Um, thank you for your responses on the Jamboard. I can see that there are a few in there. Um, and as Nia mentioned earlier on, um, the Jamboard will remain um, open, let's say, until Friday um, of this week. Um, not really expecting you to be paying a lot of attention to uh, to this after today, but if you wanted to, then you can go knowing that you're able to come back and, uh, and, and populate that. So the idea of this second Jamboard is to tell us what you need support with and help with and, um, and, and maybe we can have a look at that, as I said, over the summer and, um, and try and work with uh, the regions on how we go about um, working towards that. So today was about demonstrating that um, we can move policy into practice and you heard uh, two uh, brilliant presentations from Joe and, and Sue. And then um, about providing that space for Welsh Government to come along and talk about um, some of the policy um, that is now uh, taking place and moving into that practice arena. So hopefully um, our role as an organisation, as the National Academy for Educational Leadership today, has been about trying to bring some coherence um, to those policy areas and demonstrating what that might look like in practice. And of course, um, we value your role as leaders in informing that policy. Um, and influencing uh, going forward. So please do get in touch with us um, at any time if there's anything that you feel that we can support you with. So for now, um, we don't want you to do anything else. Um, you've passed this information on to us and we'll take it um, from here. And as I said, today's session was um, intended to make you think uh, back um, about what you've achieved over the last year and I think you should be extremely proud of everything you've done and managed throughout the last 12 months so the last 24 months um, considering everything that you've been through um, with uh, with the pandemic and continued um, to provide for our learners our young people our children and young people um, I don't want you to think oh my gosh I'm going to have to work over the summer. I've listened to some excellent presentations and I'm so far behind. That's not the message today. The message was to demonstrate and remind us that we're all at different points um, and that when it begins in September 2022 for our primary schools and, um, and some of our uh, secondary schools, that it is the beginning. Um, and it, there is at no point um, that we're saying that you've got to go away from today um, and do a lot of work before the end of term. Um, it's OK to feel a little bit unsettled, but you should also remind yourself about what you have achieved and be proud about that um, as well. Um, we've also reminded ourselves that we can learn from each other just listening to Sue and Joe. Um, and noticing some of the points and the questions that you raised in the chat is how important it is for peer to peer learning to happen um, and doing um, an online session like this allows us to bring those learner, uh, leaders sorry, uh, from across Wales together to be able to do that. So we do um, intend on promoting this kind of work going forward and hope that you can uh, join us for further sessions. So. Going forward, um, we will be working with the regions um, on how we support you. And uh, when you come back in uh, in September, ready for the autumn term, I'd just like to remind you of the cross-regional offer um, as part of the national approach to curriculum for Wales. Um, there will be provision available um, in the autumn term um, for middle leaders and senior leaders on offer um, through uh, the regional offer, as I said. So keep uh, keep in touch with your improvement partner. Uh, watch out for your uh, letters, your newsletters coming out from your, your regions and partners um, with the details around that offer and then also from the leadership academy um, we'll be offering three webinars in the autumn term with a focus um, on curriculum um, and presenting in the first series of curriculum unlocked will be professor graham donaldson and as we all know that is a name very familiar to us um, right from successful futures back in 2015 um, so we're inviting uh, Graham to come along uh, and, and talk to us about uh, where we are um, as a, a country, um, but also um, to give some advice to our leaders um, on how they progress um, through the next steps. Professor Ken Muir um, will be uh, presenting on the 24th of November. 
Um, and if this name is slightly more unfamiliar to you, uh, Professor Kenmuir is also Scottish um, and has currently reviewed Curriculum for Excellence um, in Scotland. So um, that's a document that we can make available um, to you. Um, and uh, he will be talking about what he found uh, when he reviewed where Scotland is. And I think that'd be a really useful uh, webinar for us to find out um, about some of the pitfalls and what went wrong, um, some of the risks that um, some of the leaders took and they didn't work out, and then maybe some of the successes as well. You know, what can we learn um, from Scotland and um, where they are? And then finally, um, on the 1st of December, and some of you are uh, uh, aware of Mark Priestley, Professor Mark Priestley. Mark Priestley um, ha, works um, in, in Scotland, um, uh, but is also um, somebody that is uh, has a, an understanding around curriculum design. Um, so there's a real opportunity for us there to engage with Mark and, and listen to, again, what Scotland have, have done and maybe ask for his advice um, on some of those areas and bring in coherence to all of those different parts of the curriculum that we've heard about the four purposes. We know about the six AOLEs. We know about the um, what matter statements and those progression and about the integral skills. Um, but but we can maybe talk to Mark there and Mark can talk to us about how all of that is brought together um, to provide uh, the best opportunities for our young people and learners. So uh, keep in touch. Uh, let us know if there's anything we can help with. Um, thank you to all our presenters today, to Sue, Joe, um, to Alan and Yvonne. Uh, for facilitating uh, today's session. Thank you to you for your presence today. As I said, a very, very busy time, but we do appreciate you uh, being online. I wish you all a very restful holiday. And when the end of term comes, make sure that you hit that off button for the summer and take the time for your whole self to heal and renew. Gwilai hapis i chigid hoilfawr.